Hi, we're going to make a quick final exam review for the 2200 class online. So just to get you started, there's going to be seven sections. And when you look at each section, there'll be a data set very similar to the, pro the projects. So what you need to do is be mindful that there's different data for each section. And we're going to go over the topics on the exams. And I've got Professor Ralston with me right now, and she's going to add her input so we can help you study the best way that you can. So for number one, you need to go back over confidence intervals in module three. And remember, there were two. There was T interval and there was Z interval. Right. For the T interval, you use that when you do not know or are not given the population standard deviation. The Z interval is used if you do know the population standard deviation. And if you'll read the question carefully, it is usually very obvious whether or not you're given that population standard deviation. And so that's going to make that determination for you whether you should use Z or T. And then be, be uh, go back and review how we actually state that. Remember, there's a kind of a formal statement. We estimate that a certain percentage um, we're confident by that percentage that the true population mean is between the two numbers. Okay, so make sure you know how to interpret that confidence interval as well. And be careful of what calculator you use. You don't want to be doing a Z interval and the T interval calculator because it will give you different results. So once you make the determination, if it's a T or a Z interval, make sure to go to the right website. And remember, in the course, at the top, under the Start Here section, it's the websites for the course. Mm -hmm. Make sure you either have them all open or you can get to them very quickly. All right, so let's keep scrolling down. So number two, one mean hypothesis test. This was in module three. This is when it started to get a little bit trickier when you had a t-test and you had no population standard deviation and you had the z-test where you had a population standard deviation. Right, and here again, guys, you're going to be having different data sets, but it's very obvious when you read the question, read carefully whether you're given the population standard deviation or not so that you know whether to do Z or T. As far as hypothesis testing goes, you guys have struggled knowing which statement is the null hypothesis and which statement is the alternative. The key to remember is that the null hypothesis must always contain equal in some form. So you're either going to have an equal sign or less than or equal to sign or a greater than or equal to sign. Now that's not necessarily always the one given in the problem. You have to decide which hypothesis is in the story based on its wording. You're going to have to take your time and read carefully Pay attention to the words. You may want to print off those list of keywords that Miss um, Pace and I sent out. And you might also want to do the flow charts mm -hmm. because the problems are going to follow the flow charts. You're just not going to have the same kind in the homework where it told you what the test statistic was, like a Z or a T. It's very generic on the final exam because we really want to know if you're understanding what test to run. Okay, the third one is the chi-squared goodness of fit in module four. People are still having trouble with this. This is the only time you use only quantitative, excuse me, qualitative data, which is names and labels. So again, think of chi-squared goodness of fit. You're trying to see how all those categories fit together. So you're going to look for proportions or percentages. Right. And here again, though, be careful with those hypotheses. Your hypothesis still has to have, the null hypothesis still has to have an equal in it. So pay very close attention and pay attention to whether you have equal proportions or whether you have very specific percentages and make sure you use the appropriate values for your calculations. Okay. And then for number four, it's linear regression. So remember, linear regression is the correlation between two variables, an X and a Y. And these variables could be like age and GPA. Think about what you did on the project. 
So I would go back and think of you're looking at two quantitative variables that you're comparing and you're doing predictions based on the hypothesis test and the p-value. A lot of times in this question too, it'll say something like, is there a relationship? Is there a connection? You do also have to identify which variable is the independent and which one is the dependent and that makes a difference. Typically your X is the independent and your Y is the dependent. And then you go through the process of determining if there even is a correlation. If there is a correlation, then you are able to find the line of best fit equation. And if you have that equation then, guys, you can make predictions. Okay, and for a prediction, the value for the independent variable is typically given to you and you simply plug it into the equation that you've gotten from the website. Don't overthink it. Absolutely. If you forgot what those hypotheses are for prediction, go back to the linear regression PowerPoint and I very clearly state what they are. If you need to, download that PowerPoint and take parts of it and put it in a Word doc so that you can use it. All right, number five is ANOVA. Remember, analysis of variance. This is in Module 4, and this is when you have quantitative data sorted by qualitative data. So think of it this way. You've got data, but you're looking at it by categories, but there's a quantitative measure for those categories. You're going to see words in this one. Typically, you're looking at how the mean or the average of each one of those groups. We're trying to see either if all the groups are the same or are the groups different? So you want to look for the word mean or average. And remember also there were two different websites for ANOVA and the, the second one listed actually works best because it works for how many ever groups you have, whether you have three groups or four groups or five groups, that one works best. So I would suggest that you use that particular website. And again, try to, if you can open these br the browser as Google Chrome, a lot of these websites work a lot better in Google Chrome than anything else. All right, number six, types of data, module one. Unfortunately, in the linear regression, we had that in there, and I wasn't a stickler for grading, but you need to be careful and go back and review these. Remember, quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative can only be nominal or ordinal. For quantitative, you can have discrete, continuous, and then ratio interval. Go back. There's been a flow chart added since we covered that. It might help you to have that flow chart printed out or available for you during the test. You have two hours to complete the test or to complete the final. So once you open it, you're going to need two consecutive hours to complete the test. You can use um, the resources in, from your notebook, the projects you've worked on all semester. Um, so you want to have those available so you're not scrambling at the last minute. Again, pull out some things that may that you know you're going to need. Um, have access, have those browsers open to get to your websites. Um, and we wish you lots of luck. And remember, you can't work with anybody else on this. This has to be your own work. And even though there's two different types of final exam, there's randomization, so you might not get the same answers or problems as anybody else. And those data sets, I will warn you now, they look very similar, but there could be differences hidden in the data. Wish you the best of luck. Take care.